Hi, I'm Rhonda and I'm from the Broken Wheel Ranch. Um, I'm not a professional dog trainer, but I have a lot of experience over 20 years. I've always had Border Collies uh, as my ranch hands. Don't know what I do without them. I do my own training and I get asked a lot of questions on how to train people's dogs and they need uh, some helpful tips. And so I'm doing these videos, a series of them, to try to learn some things good information on training that has always helped me. Um, so I'm going to start today with just some basics. So where I begin is in a balance. And so I'm going to draw that. I normally draw this in dirt, but I don't think it'll do too well in the, on the camera. But anyway, I have a round pin here and I have a few sheep. I usually use three to five sheep. Um, today I'm going to use three. But um, so the sheep are in the middle. So there's my little um, sheep. Nah. I'm a really good artist. So uh, they're in the middle of my round pen. So it's kind of like a clock and we're gonna keep a balance. And so your dog is gonna be on the, this is not by the way, the round pin fence line. This is just a, a circle that we're gonna be working in. It's an invisible circle and your dog is on the opposite side of you. So when I start him, the dog is with me and then I send him around and he's gonna keep a balance. So I use uh, international terms, I use come by in a way to give directions. Now these dogs have a, a natural instinct that is really, really wonderful for herding sheep. They have a natural instinct to gather. Um, so your pup's gonna run around to the opposite side of you that's your balance. So if he's going to go this way, so I, I block the path that I want him to not to go in. So I'll put my arm or staff out here and I'm going to say back and he's going to go around in this direction. That's an away direction. That's counterclockwise. So how I memorized that when I first started out is it goes away from time, counterclockwise, away. And then I will follow him. So we're good, just going to go around like that. Uh, and I will follow him. I'm not chasing my dog. A lot of people think you're chasing your dog. I'm following him because I want to keep that balance. And then when I want him to go the other way, way, come by, which is a counterclockwise direction, come by the time, um, I will just stop. I'll put my staff down, block the direction that he's going in, and I'll say back and then he'll automatically turn around and he'll start going by the time, come by. Um, and I'll follow him and keep that balance. Um, so what they're doing is they're doing what comes natural to them and I'm just telling them what they're doing. So when I get him going in the circle and block the way I don't want him to go and he's going that way, I say away. And so now he's learning a vocal command and he's learning a sign language because I'm blocking away. I'm pushing him counterclockwise away from time. And then I will turn around. I won't go in front of the sheep and block his way. I will just turn around as he's coming around, block the direction. I'll say back. Back is actually the very first command I teach him. Back. And he'll turn around and go the opposite way. And then I'll follow him around and come by the time, come by clockwise. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do. And now it's important also two more commands. I'm gonna start with back and that's gonna to evolve to look back. You know, if, if uh, a cow or, or sheep split off from the herd and they don't notice, uh, you're gonna to have to tell them to look back and they'll look back and go get them and bring them back in. So that's what that's gonna evolve in. Um, it also will work out to say get back means get back behind the sheep or the cows Anyway, um, that's the balance and that's where we're going to start and um, and when we're Finished I'm going to say hold two hands up or one hand uh, hold and That's for them to stop. I need a, a It's important to have a good stop on the dog. Otherwise, you're going to get run over. But anyway, he uh, I, I have them stop and if um, to help with that, I might back up to the fence. So 
so the sheep have no place to go but to run over me in the fence. And then the dog automatically stops. And I'll say, hold. And then the hardest one of all is that'll do come. Um, you walk off and you say a couple taps on my side and I say, that'll do come. That's the hardest one of all for them to learn. Um, they don't want to quit and that's a good sign. So don't get mad at them for that. You just got to keep trying until they acknowledge you that, and come uh, on their own free will. And you say, that will do come. And then you, you, I have leads on them when I first start. And I'll pick up that lead and, uh, and we'll, that will do come. It'll stop. It means good job. We're done now. And, um, and that's uh, what you have in the balance. And that's where we'll begin. And that's where I'm going to start with these dogs. Now I have some tools that I use in training. I use staffs and um, they're very inexpensive. I had these laying around. I think they're three quarter inch PVC pipe. I have a short one. I, that's my favorite. And I have a long one. Sometimes it's necessary. And these are not weapons. <laughs> so, uh, but they are helpful. They're an extension of your arm. And it's to um, protect your pup or your young dog. I use them to just an extension of my arm. I slap the ground and uh, block their direction and tell them back. That's what I use. Um, sometimes they want to crowd in and get in with the livestock, kind of stir them up a little bit. I might slap the ground and flick some dust up and say out, you know, to get out further. Uh, but anyway, these are really handy. Um, when I'm first working, this down here is Jay, my pup. He's He's not a finished dog yet. He's got some fine tuning to do, but um, he gets a little wild. So I, with this long one, I would use when I worked him when I was first training him. And I might reach over the sheep and hit the ground to get him out so I'm not getting run over. But um, anyway, that's one tool that I use. I use, um, I start off on a long lead. This one's not too long, but I like a 10 foot lead on my young dogs when they're first starting. Uh, I lead them out there, then I get them going, and uh, I'll drop the lead, let them start circling. Um, and when it's long enough, that doubt will do come and they don't. Sometimes it's good to just catch them and step on that lead and, and then they stop and then you uh, go from there. Um, I also, as you get, now I'm not gonna use my hat on, the, on these young dogs, but I'm pretty, I'm a good dead aim with this hat <laughs> to get their attention sometimes to get them out if they're not uh, paying attention to the staff or um, or they need a correction that doesn't hurt them, but it does get their attention. And so I, so I'll have a hat on and I'll, I'll fling my hat at them or I'll slap it on my side to get their attention a little bit. Um, another couple more suggestions on uh, getting started on your on your young dog or or any dog really um just short works don't overwork them because then it becomes work to them and you want them to have fun they love this more than anything they know what they were born to do they're born with all these good natural instincts and um they really wanted work and when you quit them you get to that doubt will do come you want them wanting more you don't want they don't want to stop and you don't want them to want to stop you want but you do want them to that will do come you want them to stop and come with you but um you want to, to leave them wanting more and then they really enjoy coming back and so short training sessions um are the key to that and they'll they'll always enjoy their work